All right, welcome back to my channel, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I have an exciting new video for you. I am at Joanne's. I am creating project bags, so if you don't know about that, there's a link in the description where you can save my shop on Etsy now. But anyways, I have to pick up some fabric that I ordered from Joanne's, and I know from for a fact that the last time I was here, Big Twist had a holiday Christmas yarn collection. Red, white, and blues and Christmas colors are my favorite colors ever to work with. And as you can tell by my hair, I'm already in the Christmas spirit. Halloween's over, time for Christmas. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and review this new yarn. I kind of felt it a little bit. I was looking at it a little bit when I was picking fabric last time. So I kind of have an idea of what they have, but I'm gonna go in depth in this video for you all. Hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you enjoy what I'm gonna create with it. Cannot pass up this sale, guys. This looks Thanksgiving-y, right? I haven't had a preppy stripe. Sometimes I tend to get inspired by things I see in the store, and I like to first record it all, so that way I know what it looks like. Okay, guys, so I found the little holiday section. Check it out, guys. This is really, really nice yarn. The logic here is that there is one with wire, metallic, and one roving. I mean, well, they're both roving, but one has the metallic and one doesn't, if I'm not mistaken. And there should be this version without the wire as well. I could combine it with one of these twinkle yarns. None of them are the exact hue though. Well, except the red. I guess the red is as close as you can get. This is dark magenta and that green. Or you could use the white, but even the whites don't match. They're not the same type of white. Oh, it could be gray. Oh yeah, we could use gray. I think gray works best with this. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. That looks good. Look at that. Oh, these yarns are so beautiful. Let's take a quick look. I think is my favorite. This is Big Twist Holiday Yarn, 98% acrylic, 2% polyester. It is 175 yards, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams. This is a roving style yarn. I don't know if it's gonna zoom in so you can see that. Hold on, let me see if I can get it to zoom in. So if you can see, it is a roving style yarn with the metallic wiring getting it together or holding it together. You can feel the metallic wiring right off the bat holding it. So it kind of has like a homespun type of feel to it. Recommended hook size is a K hook. Oh, that's a big hook. It says you need six for a sweater. <laughs> is that a challenge? <laughs> So I think this one's really, really cool. And it has a little picture here. It kind of shows you how it works up. And then they have solid with a gold metallic strand wrapping it around. And here's the picture that shows you how it is worked up. Both of them have a gold metallic finish, by the way. And last but not least that I have here is this green one. I had to get this green one. Look at that, green with shiny green metallic. Oh, wow. And I believe this one is called, oh, green with Lurex. <laughs> the reason why I got this one is because I got two of these and it, the green is the same hue that is in that one, which is kind of like an olive green because the green in here is too, this one is more blue. This one's a straight up green. So it wasn't gonna match. So I got two of these to mix with this one. And for this one, I'm probably gonna mix it up with another yarn. They are soft. They're not itchy right off the bat, but they do feel dry, if that makes sense. So they came out with, Big Twist came out with this Twinkle yarn. It actually has a sparkle in it. And it's called Big Twist Twinkle. This one is their size four. 
380 yards, color gray, so it's an actual gray. So I'm gonna mix these two together and it's in the Big Twist family. So let's see, I'm literally improvising this as I go. I ended up making an executive decision to just use up the whole cake and make a nice infinity scarf. So I made it long enough so that way when you hold it like this and then you do the twist, it's a good length for you. And for me, I like mine kind of nice and snug. So if I make this nice and big, this should be nice and puffy up here. So that's how I measure for my scarves. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, six half double crochets tall. So if you want to copy exactly what I'm doing, this is 101 rows for the collar ribbing. And I made sure that I added four half double crochet in between the two elevated spaces. So 101 times four, you should have 404 total half double crochet when you do your first row. I'm going to start pulling from this. And who knows, I might alternate between combining some of the gray, but for right now, as I'm improvising, I'm gonna continue with the scarf now, make it wide, as much as wide as I want it to be, and then I'm gonna close it because I think it's gonna be a cleaner look doing it that way than going in the round and having that line go diagonal. So I swatched ahead and I didn't like it, so I, I frogged it. Uh, originally, I put one half double crochet of the holiday yarn in every stitch. But since adding four sections, which is totally fine, continue doing that, add four between every elevated section of the collared ribbing. Um, I did, I ended up skipping every stitch, every other stitch, and adding one half double crochet, and it's been playing out evenly, meaning I'm not packing too much of the thicker yarn, because it is, as I'm working with it, it is coming off as a thicker yarn. And yeah, so I think in this row, I'm gonna add a double crochet, no. Now I'm gonna add a half double crochet. Hopefully I can get one more row of this. If not, the color's gonna be changing. And then I'm thinking maybe a window pane after this, so that way we can spread out this yarn as much as we can. Okay, so I'm kind of filming this in the future because I realized I didn't explain it to you when I did it the first time. So essentially, anytime I say window pane stitch on this channel, essentially what I'm doing, okay, so if you hear, if you're starting whatever row or you're want to do it you will chain one get that space in between skip one stitch do double crochet or half double crochet whatever stitch you're choosing for that row chain one skip a stitch same thing double crochet chain one skip a stitch and you i call it window pane because they look like little windows so whenever i say window pane stitch this is what you're doing I swatched a head and I, after the window pane, I added a double crochet to every stitch in there. And now I am starting to do triple yarn over, bead stitch, which is always a favorite, two, three, pull through, and close it. So I'm gonna do that and then one more double crochet, triple yarn over bead stitch with a slip stitch, and then another double crochet row. I switched back to my Christmas yarn and I just did a half double crochet row all over through. And then what I'm doing here, and I'm gonna show you real quick, look at that sparkle, guys. It's so beautiful. What I'm gonna do here is, it's kind of like a variation of diamond stitch. I'm just switching it up a little bit, so I don't know if this actually has a name. You can let me know in the comments down below. But essentially what I'm doing is I am skipping two stitches, one, two, and on the third one, go ahead and do a double crochet, chain one, and in this first, in this first double crochet line that we just did, I'm going to go ahead and use that as my floor and do three double crochets in that. Two, three, okay. And then without slip stitching it, so don't even do anything else, go ahead and skip two stitches and repeat it and do everything all over again. So just chain one, and then three double crochets in that. Don't close it, just move on to the next one. Skip two, and on the third. You're gonna go ahead and do that all the way through. You're gonna get this nice effect, and you're gonna close it off with, guess what? One more half double crochet. 
so that way it balances out. This is probably, this is gonna look so nice in the daytime and when you're outside, this is beautiful. Before I forget, so what I am doing now is I am adding a half double crochet to the top of that, okay? And what I am doing there is, because I'm about to finish it, uh, when you approach one of these sections, so you're gonna obviously put one here in the middle in that space, and then you're going to make sure that there's one here in the first one, put one here directly in the middle, so like the highest point of that arch, and then back in the middle. Because remember, you skip two stitches here on the bottom, you really only need two stitches when you come back up here at the top. That way you're not adding any new stitches and you're not under counting as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Cool, huh? Just in case you didn't believe me about the frogging test, look at that. Easy. Morning, good morning. So it is the next day and I wanted to get the natural lighting in here to show you this finished garment in all its glory. Look at how that sparkles, you guys. Check that out, isn't this awesome? Look at that, twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. So this is my infinity scarf. I closed it off here after I did this. Don't really pay attention to this. This is just added length to the scarf so that way it's sufficiently long enough to do the twist. This isn't really part of the pattern. I was just using the taking advantage of how this stuff would look like. I was swatching for another project, but it helped because it added length to the project. Um, so don't pay attention to this. This is the design, okay? So what you see here all the way across is the design. It just imagined that it was long enough. If I were to put this on, it's gonna look like this. So you give it a twist and it's big enough to get it all the way around. And there you go, look at that. Oh, wow. I am officially ready for Christmas, you guys. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, check that out. Look at all that texture and all of that sparkle. It is insane how that sparkles. Look at that sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. This is the vision, the idea. This is how I like to wear my scarves. I like them nice and chunky, nice and close to the, uh, or not chunky, I like them nice and full and voluminous and enough to cover the back. You know that back part of your neck that sometimes the cold can just seep in if you're wearing a, a, a scarf made wrong or not sufficiently big enough. And so this definitely covers you on that. You will not get any air in the back. And you have this cool hood now if you want, or you could just leave it super chunky. Check that out, look at that. If you were to just leave it with a twist in there, this is what it would look like. Oh my God super Christmas vibes. It is so cozy too. The only thing I will say, so my final notes on this, it was easy to work with. It was easy to frog. The only thing, and like I said, and this goes with anything that has a metallic strand in it. If you wear jewelry, such as me, I wear a chain, it will get caught in there. So if you're like me, do what I'm doing now, wear, try and wear a sweater over your jewelry if you're going to wear something that's twinkly like this because the metallic strand does tend to get caught up in the necklace and I already pulled it once on this and I had to go ahead and fix it. Uh, so you, we don't want that. So just keep that in mind. If you are going to do it, just make sure you cover up your jewelry with a sweater and you should be fine. Like it hasn't gotten caught once right now. Yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you did. This is my big twist holiday Christmas cowl. Hopefully you guys are able to follow along. Everything is made by your dimensions, so make it as long as you want, and then just follow the stitches that I went ahead and did here. Then look, you can just even wear it like this if you want. And it can become like a little mini pocket shawl. Just if you wrap your hands. Thank you so much to all the members of the Limon Crochet channel. You guys make this experience so much fun and you give help me give lots of purpose to and direction of what I'm doing on this channel. So thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. But I would like to give a special shout out to our Inner Circle and Influencer members. So let's start off with our Limon Inner Circle. Quick shout outs to Cocktails and Crochet with Coco. We also have Karen Miller in the house. And let's not forget our influencers, Araceli Pintado, Noemi Torres, and Blanca Valtierrez. Thank you so much. 
everyone. I you were, we have such a great time in the live. I will also be making an announcement on my official bags. So if you would like to save my Etsy shop, I will leave that in the description box below. My first update will be soon. So hopefully you guys enjoy what I'm doing. It is just something extra to help support my law school endeavors and it's just an easy way for me to a creative it's a, it's a creative outlet for me to to give you guys something you guys can own made by me by my hands and who knows maybe it'll turn into something bigger so if you guys support this yarn this um if you guys support my project bag endeavor we shall see how far we can take it but yeah thank you so much and i'll see you guys in the next video